Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular. Today we're looking at the DivKid Stereo Strip. This is the third module from DivKid. It's very exciting. We know this guy. We know that this is going to be fascinating. It's going to have an element of simplicity about it, which then deep dives into strange, weird avenues of all sorts of modular stuff that we have never thought of. The stereo strip is an audio processor. It has a three band EQ. It has pan, which you can control via voltage. It's a stereo VCA. It has the ability to bring in external instruments and pump them out at Eurorack levels. You can also distort stuff, saturate stuff, root things in odd places, and all of it from a very manageable and controllable module. Does that seem like a lot? It's always a lot, but this is one of the things it can do, and I find this completely delightful. It's got a mute switch, a momentary mute switch. Oh yes, a bit like the mutes, also from DivKid. So yeah, it's capable of all sorts of things, right? All sorts of stuff you can stuff in here. Works as an audio processor, works as a CV manipulator because it's also DC coupled, so you can run in two different waveforms, have them mixed to different places and different outputs. It's really interesting when you get around to designing your own modules that it's it becomes this cascade of functionality where you just want to keep packing more stuff in and packing more stuff in because all oh, it could do this. Uh, but what DivKid has done here is found this really, really nice balance between offering a shed load of stuff while keeping it, keeping it from spinning off into crazy, you know, unnecessary directions that aren't particularly helpful. Everything in here is helpful. I mean, using it purely as a, as a stereo processor is, is really nice. I can imagine having a few of these just to do interesting voltage control panning in different places or to EQ some stereo signals. But you can also use it for routing out to effects on an effects bus. In fact, it can become an effects send, two of them, of course, and then you can, you can wobble between them or envelope between them, or do things more intentionally than I would, perhaps. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why on earth is this guy doing a video when DivKid is evidently going to have done the definitive video on this module? Well, of course he had, but you know, he's a nice chap and he asked me if I fancy having a bit of a play with it. So I said, sure. So if you want the absolute detail, if you want the, the finer points of absolutely everything that the Stereo Strip does, then head on over to DivKid's channel and watch that video. This video is me fiddling about, <laughs> fiddling about with this really nice module that a mate of mine's made. And hopefully with my more slapdash approach, I'll be able to highlight some, some interesting things about it. So let's take it off its perch integrate it back into the case and we'll have a look, see what we can make of it. So here it is nestled between DivKid's other modules, the Oct LFO and the Mutes. And I've got it patched up like I had earlier with just the qubit surface routing through. It has a stereo output going to the stereo input on the stereo strip with a stereo output going out this side. Just to take you through the basics then, stereo in and out, you've then got a three band EQ. For 
some simple, blissful little bits of shaping. You've got a pan control, or a balance control, I guess you could call it, if you're going in stereo. You have a mute switch, just like the mutes, which has a momentary option for performances. When you want to go uh, 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 onto something, then you can. And then you've got your level control here. Now, level control is quite clever in that it covers quite a wide range. Now, because this is essentially a VCA with a CV input at the top, the shape of envelopes can vary enormously between sort of five and ten volts. And so you can use this to make up the gain depending on which envelope you're using. So for five volts, put it around here, ten volts here, eight volts somewhere in between. But it can also simply be used for cranking stuff up. But the first point of fascination is that pan. CV input. So I'm going to take an LFO from the Oct, jam that in there, then I've got a CV control here on the depth and I can just start bringing that in. something going on there's something going on I can't quite articulate because you know you know it's moving the pan knob you know it's just panning from side to side and yet there's this other stuff going on there's something about that movement which seems to bring out other things you hadn't heard before So that on its own is, is quite a beautiful thing. Stick it after a stereo module or perhaps the out of a stereo effects processor and you have this, this lovely way of doing a little bit of shaping, you know, pull out the high bits, drop out the bass, drop the bass back in, give it a little mid boost or cut and then pan it either manually into different places or just let it modulate in this strangely glorious kind of 
drunken waltzer kind of way. It's just fantastic. I mean, you could have a whole number of these lined up with different things coming through that you can then, you know, modulate and send. It's, it creates this richness that you know, just wasn't there before. But let's try something else. Let's stick in a mono source and have a little bit of play with that. So now I'm using the Honor oscillator, which is just here, this, this fella here. That's plugging in directly into the left input, the mono input. I can then pan that from one side to the other, or I can give it the same treatment as the stereo signal. And similarly, use the EQ on that. Let's give it a bit of a tune. Now I can plug in the CV control from an envelope into the VCA. Now things get even more interesting once you start abusing the CV control over the pan. So rather than just taking an LFO, let's take a VCO, stick that in for a bit of audio rate nonsense to see what comes out the other side. So I'm going to take the side wave output from the Make Noise STO, put that into the pan CV. No, 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 no,
if we give the SEO a bit of a sequence. As I mentioned earlier, the stereo strip is also able to provide an interface for external instruments. You can plug line level stuff in here. So the output of a synthesizer, plug it into there, and then the output can route through your Eurorack system. You can then use the three band EQ, the panning, the level, the, all that kind of stuff and have it completely flowing through the rest of your modular. Now that is done by switching these little switches here. These switch from uh, from Eurorack level to line level. But we can also use those for something a little bit interesting because it's never just going to be one thing. DivKid's going to build in all sorts of odd little bits and pieces. So we can use this on a Eurorack signal to give it a bit of a boost. So I'll set this up as a VCA again to give it the right sort of level. And then I can click that in with this switch. And we get this nice, meaty boost. Which I can then, you know, calm down a little bit on the front. Or wind it in. If I pull that level down a little bit at my mixer, I can then wind that in even further. You see the peak lights going crazy. Oh yeah.
<laughs> it's a fabulous thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was just a byproduct of what they were trying to do in to get line level and euro rack level, but it's just superb. It's a lovely, you know, it's not over the top. It's not going completely nuts. It just gives this meaty, fruity flavor to stuff that's going through. Fantastic. So, you know, already pulling out the uses. First of all, it just makes this glorious panning thing going on with tone shaping on stereo signals going through. You can do the same with mono stuff going through and then you can boost it and saturate it to this state of loveliness while still spinning it around your head in some kind of space. What a lovely thing. And all the time you can just stuff in some kind of audio rate modulation to make it like go into some sort of weird ring modulation other thing that's <laughs> going on. As I say, please refer to the official DivKid video for the proper explanations of what any of this is all about.
Right, the next thing I wanted to try is to root in something and then root through two different effects and kind of crossfade between the two. Okay, what I've done here, what I think I've done, <laughs> is I've still got the honor coming through. Coming through here, I've taken one output and put it through a chorus and another output put it through a delay. Now they're still panned hard left and half right at the moment, so on one side, I've got the delay, and on the other side I've got the chorus. So what I should do, just put that central and centralise each channel on my mixer, so they're both coming through together. And then the pan becomes the mix between the two rather than panning left and right. If you see what I mean. So if I stick in my CV onto the pan, let's see if we can get something interesting to happen. Interesting. I mean, DivKid suggests putting, uh, splitting your input so you have a, a wet and a dry input. So I can take one side of it into there. Oh, come on. And take another side of it into a separate channel to use as like the wet dry mix. And that way I can use this level to dictate how much of the effect is being used. So this is essentially becomes the effect set. So there's nothing there at the moment. And I can dial that in. And I can probably put up the wet dry mix on the other ones. So yeah, that's that's really interesting. Now you can use this as two separate mono strips if you wish, but it's all going through the same EQ and bits and pieces. So you can affect two completely different channels of stuff at once. So there you are, the stereo strip, a whistle stop tour through some of the possibilities of what it can do, at least the things that I found that I really enjoyed. It can do a whole lot more. There's packed in here all sorts of different utility and possibilities of routing and mangling and tone shaping and panning and wobbling and generally doing good things to your audio and control voltage. For all the proper details and in-depth analysis, then do go and check out DiffKid's own YouTube channel where he will have put together the ultimate guide to this little fella. Uh, for me, I'm totally in love. 
with the whole panning thing. I want that always. That is always going to be my thing from here on in. Everything will be panning. Line or something more stereo and evolving and evocative and beautiful. (laughs) 
That's right, good, that is. Thanks, Div Kid. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. <laughs> <laughs>